everyone, my name's Sinead. This video is gonna be a video about how to do your Matt's IA. Now, I'm really sorry if there's knocking and screaming in the background, so just bear with me, okay? We're, we're not here to listen to a nice, well-edited video. We're here to get information on how do we score well on these damn math IAs. This video will be split up into a few different parts. First, we're gonna be talking about how to find a topic, the hardest part about the math IA. Next, I'm gonna be giving examples of like other people's IAs be going through the mark scheme and analyzing that and showing you what that means and how you can actually get those marks. And lastly, I'll be giving you some tips and tricks on how to write the IA and what kind of formatting style and whatever you can use. What is the Maths IA? Now, the Maths IA is worth 20% of your IB grade. It is marked out of 20 points and what it is according to the IB Internal assessment in Mathematics SL is an individual exploration. This is a piece of written work that involves investigating an area of mathematics. Hey, that's a lot of hoo-ha right there. Basically, what the IA is, is that it is a chance for you to show the IB examiners how the mathematics that you learned in class can be applied to the real world. It's like a science report, but for math, so it's still a bit different from like a normal science report, so you don't have to deal with safety issues and like, you know, like um, uncertainties that much. So quick examples, this could be like using a linear regression equation to predict something, trying to model like the current of the waves using a sine function, trying to, finding the volume of revolution of like a copper object. Just something to do where you can use maths to describe or explain something about the real world and show how maths that you learned in your classroom is applicable and relevant. If you want to skip to how to find a topic, please do. But I'm going to first talk about my experience with the IA, uh, a bit of personal experience and how I found it and what you should and should not worry about. So, I got 20 out of 20 from my IA. I was really proud of it. I, I really liked my IA in the end, but it was not something that was easily done. I spent term three of year one doing it so I actually did it quite early because I didn't have anything to do during the break and I didn't want to study so I decided hey why not try to do my math IA but there's no reason why you have to do it that early the math IA really doesn't take that long if you take the right approach um, mine took about like two weeks and then like another week and a bit to finalize and that's not me working every day on it that's just me working like a few one to two hours a day on it and then eventually it's done it's not something that should take you a long time however if you are having struggles with it and you are finding like you're taking a long time, that's okay too. I'm just saying it's not something that should take 20% of your time because it's 20% worth your marks. It should take really a small section of your time because you need to spend more time actually studying for those exams which are worth 80%. The first thing I want to address that, yeah, this IA thing is a bit weird and you're gonna be quite confused when you're first trying to figure it out. You're not really gonna know what you're doing, but Hopefully after this video you'll have a bit more clarity on what to actually do because uh, when I first started the IA doing I had no idea what it was, what it meant, and like what to do and my like road to finishing my IA was not simple. It was like chaotic. I ran into problems. I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't sure if my method was correct. So you're gonna run. This is the thing with maths, right? You're gonna run and this is what all my friends say. You're gonna run into a lot of problems. You may have to change your IA a few times. You're gonna have to change it drastically. But if you want to succeed, the only thing I can tell you is that just keep trying to overcome your problems. Keep trying to improve, have a growth mindset in mind, and you will get there and you will, um, like, you will succeed. You may not get like full marks, but like, it's better than just giving up, so yeah. Don't stress too much if you're finding it hard because it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, then there'd be no point in doing it. Now moving on to how to find an IA topic. Now, this is probably the simplest advice that I can give, which is so straightforward and it makes so much sense after you hear it, but then it seems to be that like no one takes this advice and everyone seems to go down the route most often traveled by and it always ends up disastrously. What most people do when they're trying to find a math IA topic is that firstly, they choose an area in math that they're very interested in. Like this is probably okay. Then they pick a vague topic within the area, for example, music. And then you might pick classic music. You wanna do something with math, Within, within classical music. And then they're gonna try and look within classical music and think in their own heads without doing any research. Oh, what kind of maths can I use to make something up about classical music? And then they try to force some sort of mathematics like linear regression into music. Sometimes you can think hard enough and then create your own method yourself. But what I find is much, much better and what I would advise you to do is to rather than try and look for like a topic 
a vague topic that you like, like for example, cylinders. Robots melting ice cream. This is the key. You want to find a method that will lead you to a number. That is it. That's what you need to find. You need to find a method that you can use that will lead you to a final number because that basically involves everything. The introduction, you're going to be introducing this. The method, you're going to be explaining what you're doing. The evaluation, you're going to be evaluating your method. Your analysis, you're going to be analyzing that number. Discussion, you're just going to be discussing that number. Do you want to be able to come out of your experiment or IA with a number or an equation that you can discuss and analyze and explain, essentially? So, rather than trying to find a topic, you want to come up with a method and then just follow through. Okay, a lot of people ask about the question, how do you come up with the question? See, this is the thing, right? People try and come up with the question first and then find the method. What you should do is you find the method and then you find the question. So don't worry about the question at the moment. Worry about finding the math. Okay, so in terms of how much maths do I have to use, honestly, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Don't try and use like, you know, every single piece of maths in the syllabus or whatever. For example, I only used logs and linear regression. I didn't use freaking calculus or statistics or anything complicated stuff like that. Some people just would do a stem and leaf plot and they wouldn't get high marks because the maths wasn't on the level of the course. This is probably a question that you want to ask your teacher once you found your method. You just have to be using maths that you learned in your course and not maths that was like prerequisite maths for your course. Don't worry too much about whether you're using uh, sophisticated enough maths because as long as you're using maths that you learned in IB, you didn't learn in preschool, then you should be fine. So now I'd like to move into a few examples of what kind of IAs that you can do. Feel free to take inspiration from these, but of course you can't word for word copy them. You would get caught for plagiarism, all that jazz. First for my IA, I got a 20 out of 20 from my teacher for my math IA is that I decided I wanted to do something on fractals. And so I just did a bunch of research about fractals and then I tried to find a method within fractals. And once I found a method, I just grabbed onto it and just powered through. What I did is that I watched these two videos, they'll be in the description box, and then I used those videos for inspiration and based off those I tried to find the fractal dimension of Indonesian islands, which was surprisingly a lot simpler than it sounds. I know it sounds a bit weird. I'm gonna go through this in another video. I'm gonna explain like how my work. That video will be in the description box, but if you don't want to watch that video, what you should do is that you should just watch all of these videos, understand the method of how you find the fractal dimension, pick a few islands, and just do it. It's simple and yeah. Another thing that a lot of my friends did, which also got really, really hard marks on, is they tried to figure out whether a certain product was normally distributed. Now the first girl that did this, she did mee goreng packets or something, and she measured a bunch of mee goreng packets and then tallied them based off like their weight. So it would be like between this weight and that weight. And then if they were that way, she'd like put a tally, whatever. And she got a bunch of weights. And then she put that on a bar chart and tried to see if it was normally distributed. And she found out that Indomie was ripping us off. The mean was actually lower than what they said on the packet. And that got her all the personal engagement marks because she could say that, oh yeah, she, she's been e eating Indomie for a long time. So yeah. Another friend did that with like Fit Bars or whatever. And she compared the chocolate ones to the blueberry ones and saw that one weighed more than the other. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Ask your teacher about how you can do it because I'm not quite sure on how the method is but yeah that's an idea. Another common one that did pretty well and has a pretty straightforward method is finding the volume of revolution of an object. So what you can do is you can take an object for example this bottle. This is actually way too simple this is just a cylinder but you can take a photo of it and you can put it in Desmos so you can like draw equations that match this object and then try and find the volume of revolution of this object. Lots of people do this, it's really simple, but it has gotten high marks. Then you find the actual volume of this object by submerging it in water and measuring the amount of water that was displaced and you compare it to the value that you got. Do the integration by hand, do it on computer, see if you get the same numbers. Like, I think the girl that did this did it in about a week and she got like 19 out of 20. Pick an interesting object, don't pick a simple one like this. Pick like some sort of weird, weirdly shaped object and then you're gonna have to like create a bunch of different lines around it and then find it find the volume of revolution and yeah pretty straightforward okay now in this section i'm going to be going over the ia criteria because this is the most important part that's going to get you the mark so you need to analyze this to the key so that you know what exactly you need to do so that you can know what to like showcase in your a that will make the ib examiner go yup 
Mux. This is for the old spec IBSL. So this is before the changeover. If you do the March 2020 IB exams, this will be relevant. Anyone after that, it will be irrelevant. So sorry about that. Uh, but it might be relevant. I'm not sure. And this is also SL. So this is a very specific niche group of people, but it might apply. It might not. I don't know. I'm just talking from my own experience here. Criteria A, communication. This is really easy to get full marks in but it does take work and effort. So basically, to get remarks, you need to make sure that the expiration is coherent, well-organized, concise, and complete. So complete means that you need an introduction, conclusion, and everything in between. Coherent means that it makes sense. So this is uh, really something a lot of people may struggle with because they try to use flowery, fluffy language. Don't use confusing language, just make it make sense, make it coherent, make it good, make it like straightforward good english and how you can do this just get it checked a bunch of times check it with other people have other people read through it ask them hey does this make sense i'm not sure about this part does it make sense don't make it confusing make it make sense well organized that just means that you know like there isn't like a random picture in the middle it means that everything's nicely like well structured on the page it doesn't look like a two-year-old made it it doesn't look like a flyer that means you have headers on all of your photos and diagrams that means that like I can just like read through it nicely as I like scroll my page whilst I'm marking my exams or whatever and I don't have to be like hey hang on wait wait I have to move here I have to move here you know you know what I mean so yeah concise means that you aren't waffling on about something that doesn't matter so make sure that when you read through it again ask yourself with every line that you write D is this necessary do I need to say this or is it just extra random book? that I'm trying to put in to make it seem like I wrote a lot. Anything that you don't need, like, don't waffle on too much about personal engagement kind of stuff. Don't tell us a whole life story about why this IA is super relevant to you. Just a few sentences at most, you know? Criteria B, mathematical presentation. So for this case, you just need to make sure that the mathematical pre presentation is appropriate throughout. If you use Google Doc, there's a section on there where you can write equations and it makes it look really nice and pretty. So if you know how to do that, like just Google if you don't, but if you know how to do that, that just makes all of the equations look nice and pretty and you can basically do whatever you want. So yeah, this just means make sure your graphs are nice. This is not that hard. If you know the basics of mathematics, which you should, because you've been studying this course, this isn't a hard one to get. Make sure that you define the key terms when required. Make sure that you use right terminology, right mathematical language. Make sure you know what you're talking about. Try to use different sorts of representation. Like use a chart, use a diagram. Represent your stuff using different sorts of like creative ways if you can. Don't mess up your integral sign for a sigma sign, you know what I mean? Personal engagement. This is weirdly worth a lot of marks. And I think this is because it's math, not science. So this is worth four marks. This asks the extent to which the student engages with the expression and makes it their own. Makes it their own. A lot of people think personal engagement means that they have to give a whole life story about why um, their personal engagement is important. Personal engagement can be seen through that, but it can also be seen through whether you tried various different methods to try and find the right answer. Did you like go into problems, but did you absolve them? Did you like find one way of finding it, but then also find another way and compared it? It basically means, did you give a about this assignment? Like, did you put in some effort into this assignment? Did you go out of your way to try and make it good, you know? If you do a first draft in one night, it's gonna be evident that there's no personal engagement there because you wouldn't have enough time and effort to put in that extra effort to show that you're being proactive within your assignment. Creative thinking can also be shown as a sign of personal engagement. I did like something that probably no one had done before and it was probably kind of weird. So I got lots of like personal engagement from that. Part D, reflection. This is only worth three marks and basically assesses the extent to which the student reviews, analyzes, and evaluates their exploration. Whilst this should be seen in like the conclusion, can also be seen throughout. If you ran into a problem and then you like talked about it and then you like explained how you overcame that problem, that's reflection, that's good enough. So what I did for mine is that uh, I tried two different methods, saw which one was the best, and then used that one. So that was my way of reflecting. I like, I was like, hey, I did this, didn't work, tried this other way. I found that this is the most perfect method. So you get three marks if there's substantial evidence of critical reflection. Basically, you just need to like acknowledge that you thought about how you can make your experiment better. That's all. Like, did you give a little bit more thought about how you can make this experiment a little bit less crap than it actually is. Criteria E, of course, very important, use of mathematics. So basically, this is the part that assesses the extent to which you use 
good math. So you get six marks if relevant mathematics commensurate with the level of the course is used. The mathematics is explored correctly through knowledge and understanding are demonstrated. So this is about whether you actually understand the maths that you are using, whether you are like using the right logical sequences, whether you whether it makes logical sense. This is really not that hard to get as long as you understand the maths that you're using. You get these marks from using maths that is, you know, not for babies. It doesn't have to be math that is on the course level. I use math that wasn't on the course level, kind of, because I use in fractal dimensions. It has to be commensurate with the level of the course, which means that it has to be like of the level of the course. So you can do something different, that's fine. It has to be like as hard as the stuff in the course is. This is just making sure that your math is correct, that you have no mistakes in your math, that you're doing things properly, that you know what you're doing. So yeah. And that's it. Read through the rubric by yourself and after you finish your first draft, read through the rubric again and then go back to your IA and see what you can do to fix to make sure it's up to date with the rubric. So yeah, when I was doing my IA, I always had the rubric by my side because the rubric is so important because it's what's gonna score you marks. And so like after I did my IA, I had to go through it and make sure, I was like, yep, this seems like I would get full marks, full marks, full marks, and then yeah, you should be good. Now moving on to some tips and tricks for the write-up. So number one, language. Don't use crazy, confusing, fluffy, random language. Be simple and straight to the point because the examiners don't care about the way you write. They want you to like write straight forward to the point and they want it to make sense. So when you're writing it, make sure what you're saying makes sense. Don't worry about how it sounds. If it sounds simple, that's okay. Mine sounds pretty simple and like straightforward like a toddler wrote it, but it, everything makes sense. And so yeah, like math is confusing. Make sure it makes sense. Two, page limit. So for it depends, honestly, I think it depends on your teacher because they're gonna be the ones mocking it. My teacher said stick to 12 pages, but then my other friend who got 19 out of 20, hers was 20 pages, but it was fine. In the rubric, there's no actual instruction that, that is about page limit, so you don't have to like, worry about it too much so if you're a page or two over don't worry about it too much but if your teacher is anal about it then you should worry about it because they're gonna be the ones marking your eyes don't do a cover page there's no point it's a waste of a page it's completely useless references if you really care about references look how I did it it's simple it's straightforward I didn't do no footnoting whatever you can look at my video and when I talk about my eye if you want to know about referencing another tip yeah just make it look nice uh, a good IA is one that can read nicely. So if you've got like stuff all over the place and it's confusing to read and you don't have like nice bald titles and like sections or whatever, the examiner is gonna like be confused by your thing. So make it easy to read so the examiner can just read it, tick you the marks. Label your diagrams, make your diagrams look nice so that the examiner can look at it and be like, wow, this looks good. I'm gonna give it marks. Other tip, read the examples on IV because those are how I figured out how to write in maths IA. I read the examples and I like kind of figured out a structure for myself and then I just wrote mine based off those structures. So yeah, do that. That was really, really, really helpful. And my final tip is don't worry too much. Oh my God, it's worth 20% and your exams are worth 80%. And whilst the IA can work to bring up your marks if you did badly in the exam, the IA isn't going to be the main contributor in your final mark. The exams are what matters the most. Try not to spend too much time worrying about it. In the IB, you have so many more important things to do that you can't let the simple math SLIA take over your life. Spend a week researching it, spend a week doing it, spend a week finalizing it, and then you should be done. I hope you liked watching this video. If it was helpful, please comment. Tell me if it was helpful for you guys. If you want to ask me more questions, you can do so. Just email me it's, or just comment in the video. If you want to see me going through my IA, that's going to be in the next video. And yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.